Welcome to the Angling for the Nervous. Today we're on the third part of our Berlin Explore. We're looking at Anhalter Bahnhof or what is left of it. Now we stayed very close to this building and I became completely fascinated with it during our four or five day stay in Berlin. I just had to know its story. So today it's going to be a shorter video, a shorter vlog, and we're just going to look at its story and its history. As you know with the vlogs, once we go down one story, we then get some side stories that, that are just as interesting, and today is no different. We'll end up looking at Albert Speer and Adolf Hitler's dream of a Germania and a swimming pool that was never built. And we'll also we'll find a connection to Berlin cricket. Who would have thought that? Anhalter Bahnhof is a railway terminus in Berlin, just south of Potsdamer Platz. It was once one of Berlin's most important railway stations, with connections all over Europe, especially to the south. But it was severely damaged in World War II, as you will see later in the vlog, and finally closed for traffic in 1952. You might be wondering why I've just shown you this map of Berlin and hopefully it will make sense in a few moments. This is a map produced by the East German, East Berlin DDR authorities in 1980 and it shows you the Berlin area. Now you can see the white blob in the middle is West Berlin but obviously they didn't recognise it and didn't see it as an area. Why was it closed in 1952? Well the GDR owned Deutsche Reichsbahn we routed all railway traffic between Berlin and places in the GDR, avoiding the West Berlin area. So then West Berlin didn't exist, so therefore the map. I guess the Berlin authorities wanted to keep it as some sort of historical monument, very similar to the church in Kurzendam, which we will see in a future vlog. I'll just quickly put in this map just to show you where we are today. Construction of the station here started in April 1839. The line ran through the historical state of Anhalt and very quickly the network grew to train services between Leipzig, Frankfurt am Main and Munich. In the 1870s the station here uh, was rebuilt. It simply was too small for the ever expanding German railway network and it became the largest in Germany and continental Europe. The refill station was opened on the 15th of June 1880 by Kaiser Wilhelm I and Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. The new facade was 101 metres across and bellied with zinc sculptures titled Day and Night and positioned on either side of the clock above the main entrance. Also around this time, the network from Anhalter increased to service Prague and Vienna. And when its service line connected to places such as Rome, Naples and Athens, the station here became known as the gateway to the south. However important the station was, it was earmarked for redevelopment as part of Adolf Hitler's grand plan to transform Berlin into the world capital Germania. These were the Nazi plans realised by Albert Speer. Under Speer's plans, the railway terminus would have ceased because its tracks were in the way of what would have been the Triumphal Avenue, known as the North-South Axis. All rail traffic arriving in Berlin would have instead have been redirected to two vast new stations located on the Ringbahn. Under Albert Speer's plans, you would have had the North Bahnhof North Station for Wedding, and opposite to that would have been the Süd Bahnhof South Station and Südkreuz. And under Speer's plans, the station here in Alta Bahnhof, this would have been earmarked to become a public swimming pool. The next part of the station's history is terrifying and extremely sad. Anhalter Bahnhof was one of three stations here used to deport about 55,000 Berlin Jews between 1941 and 45. This was about a third of the city's entire Jewish population. 
destination of these awful deportations was usually to Theresienstadt in the Czech Republic or what was known then as Czechoslovakia. And from there, many were deported elsewhere, further to the east, in countries like Poland, to camps like Sobibor and Auschwitz. Due to extensive Allied bombing, the S-Bahn and the U-Bahn were closed in the latter parts of the war, and the service did not really start operating on the North-South Link until June 1946. American personnel dismantled the roof, or what was left of Van Holter roof, in March 1948, and a limited train service began operating again in the August of that year. Due to its location, the Soviet Union and the Eastern authorities switched all remaining trains to Ust Banhof in the Russian sector on the 17th of May 1952. Therefore, with no services, the Anhalta Banhof was closed. Plans were made in West Berlin to rebuild the station, but they never came to anything. And in 1960, demolition began, I think the date was the 25th of August 1960, to much public outcry. But the authorities allowed a section of the facade to stand as we see it today, to remind people of its past. Today on an area where the rail tracks would have stood entering into the station, is a football park and you can see people playing football there during the day and into the evening under floodlights. And whilst we were here, there was a conference going on at the Tempodrome. The Tempodrome is the building in the distance. There is an area of greenery to the south and west of the station, and this shows you in this area where one of the platforms once stood. Also, we're close to the Landwehr Canal, and this shows you the railway lines that once would have gone into and held to Banhof. This lies just south of the station. I'd like to end on a slightly lighter note. There was a, a road very close to Anhalt to Banhof where we stayed called Halesha Straße and we walked down it numerous times during our stay here. And one evening when we were going to a Greek restaurant by the canal, I just noticed this signage and it, and it just intrigued me. It was basically covered up with, with vegetation, it was hard to see. But I thought, there's some cricketers there. And that's something you don't expect to see in Berlin. Berlin and Germany really aren't known as cricketing centers. So it really intrigued me. And it led me on this tangential story, which, you know, maybe not of interest to many people, but you know, what is cricket in Germany and Berlin? So for the rest of the vlog, I'm just gonna I briefly mention some of the history of the Berlin Cricket Club and the state of cricket in Germany. On the information board here, the only name I got was a Tom Dutton, which I'm going to guess is an Englishman, and I've tried to, to research him over the last week or so, but really I've not come up with anything other than his connection here and the playing of cricket and rugby on the grounds near the station in 1883, which happens to be the same year that the Berlin Cricket Club was formed. And this is something I thought I'd never see in my lifetime. Cricket being played by the Olympic Park, or at the Olympic Park, by the Olympic Stadium in Berlin. That's just wonderful, but, but crazy. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating, the British forces were here in the British sector of Berlin after 1945 and I know that they play cricket here so maybe um, I'm slightly exaggerating but it still, um, still seems slightly strange for me. And lastly, this is a picture of the German national cricket team who play in the lower leagues of the European competition in both the one day and the T20 competitions. And I, for one, will be watching out for their results in future. So, good luck to the German cricket team. 
perhaps you've become my second team now. That's it, and goodbye from the Entrepreneurs. I hope you've enjoyed our story on Anhalter Bahnhof Station and some of the side stories around it. Thank you.